or hitman, and he was in the Dixie Mafia, and he was in Iran-Contra, and he was in all this shady stuff, and he helped get Bill Clinton in power. But he got out of it. He wasn't kicked out of it. He tried to bring the Clintons down when they ran for president. A lot of his friends got killed. He got attacked. And so I use the prodigal son story of the one son comes to the dad after he's accepted the other son back who got his inheritance early and ran off like a playboy, like an idiot for a, you know five years. And he comes back, he apologizes, and the dad says, kill the best calf we've got. We're going to put on a party for the neighborhood. And the good son, the one that was never bad, says, why did you, why are you treating him so good? And the father says, how much do you think I love you, my son that wasn't ever bad? And that's what this comes down to. But I'll tell all these people out there that are cowards something. You know, those of you that never lived in the arena, it's real easy to sit there and look at other people that were in the arena and talk about how bad they were. Well, I'd listen to that from some people out there who've actually done something. But anybody I know that's ever been in the arena and done something isn't so quick to put people down who've changed their ways 25 years ago. And that's what matters. And now Larry Nichols, at what could be close to the end of his life, is now putting himself in the crosshairs again to warn you about how evil the Clintons are and what their tactics are. So Larry Nichols, thank you for calling. Thank you for uh, being on video Skype with us. Thank you for joining us. I don't know if you've seen the documentary yet. It'll be on YouTube uh, later tonight. You should be able to see it in the morning. It's, it's very powerful. We're going to put out a part two soon because there's just hours of it. But this is about 35 minutes long. But thanks for having us up to your home and around Arkansas with some of these places where these criminals came from. Uh, give, give us your view on what I just said and what you think of the debates and the developments of the last three weeks, Larry. Well, you're kind of fired up. I'll say that. And uh, it takes that. We've got to be fired up. It's about our country. About the debate, Alex. I do believe I have seen episodes of Romper Room that were probably more informative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here we go again, Alex. Here we go again. Wax dummy standing on a stage, over rehearsed. Very few actually speak things from the heart on the cuff. Well, just as you did, just as I'm doing. My word, do you think half of those people up there could come on this program, sit here right now, and not have 50 aides? I know. I was a handler. You got people sitting around you, and they're critiquing every word, and they're giving you every kind of hand signal you can get. But you know what they didn't mention? Do you know what they didn't say? I think one time, one time I heard the only mention of the one thing that will save our country. And that's states' rights. All I heard was what they were going to do in Washington. All I heard was Washington, 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 government, government, government. That won't work. Washington's gone. The only thing that's going to save America is, is states' rights. You know, our, our Constitution, Alex, is a negative compact. It wasn't set up to be so smart as to tell us every move. What it did is it told it what the federal government could not do. And half of the stuff, or better, that was said tonight would have been covered under what the federal government cannot and should not ever do. And they all sat up there and talked about it. They all talked about it. It's, and golly, think about it, Alex. We've got <clears throat> 17 Republican candidates running for president. And not a one of them stood up and defended states' rights as the only thing that's going to solve everything. There was a point at which Huckabee, at least, made a point about Kentucky. I don't ever want to see, and I know you don't, a Christian put in jail for their belief. But they say that woman, think about all the guys up there that said she needs to obey the law. Well, let's break that down, Alex. Number one, she was hired by the state of Kentucky, as far as I know, or that's who she worked for. And the law in the state of Kentucky, they did not, they do not. It was voted on by the people, passed by the legislature, signed by the and governor. And when the Supreme Court 
struck down the federal law. It reverted to the state. But if you read the Constitution, it was already to the state. It shouldn't have been a federal issue to begin with. That's right. They should have said to the federal judge, buddy, appreciate your concern, but you've got zero legal standing in this matter. Zero. But what did they talk about? They said there should have been some other remedy so that the lady wouldn't have been treated so bad. Alex, she shouldn't have been treated at all. She was doing her job, obeying the state constitution to which she was hired under to serve. The people that let it down was the governor and the legislature of that state that should have come. And let's to expand her on side. that since you mentioned, I want to get into the Clintons because this is a great point you raised. The Stasi has been reactivated in Germany, but not in the East, all over. This is mainstream news on Infowars.com, mm -hmm. links to German news with a straight face. If you criticize the millions of illegal, radical Islamists, many of them pouring in, you're given a 5,000 euro fine. That's more than $5,000. It's like $5,600 in current conversion rates today. We checked it. And 120 days in jail, no judge, no jury. And they literally are hiring the former Stasi to run it. This is unprecedented. And this is the political correctness they want here. I mean, this right. it, it, locking Christians up and, 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 and arresting Germans if they say they don't want to pay for somebody from North Africa. I mean, well, this is crazy. About, it is. And think about this. They're bringing Obama's bringing 10,000 Muslims into this country. And, you know, that's just some, some small the number they put to just break the ice. I mean, that's I mean, they bring in a million a year anyways. Yeah, they're bringing in 10,000 that cannot possibly be vetted. Alex, you know what that is? You know what Islam, the people in Islam claim that there's 25% of the people that follow Islam are considered fundamentalist radical Islam. So let's take 10,000 that we're bringing in. What's that, 2,500 potential radical Islamists coming in? And we're bringing them here and we're going to put them up in houses next to yours, mine, and everybody watching this program? No, it makes no sense. Now, you'll have to think about one other thing. Hillary, excuse my pup. I, I know what it looks like, Alex. I know it looks like Hillary's in a world of hurt. She's not. There's no way when she gets in the South, and you know it, Alex, that what's-his-name Sanders is going to show like he's showing now. Number two. Sanders will go over like a lead balloon. That's right. Number two, she cannot be prosecuted. You do know that, don't you? She can't be prosecuted because if she were to be prosecuted, then as her defense, she would have to show the emails to defend herself. And then, of course, since they're classified and top secret, they can't be revealed. So the judge will have to throw it out and say he can't prosecute her. So she's not going to be prosecuted. Come here, Pluto. So here. we like Pluto. He's in the upcoming documentary. Very handsome creature. I know. That's what bothers me. He got into it, and now he's wanting to hog the show every time. But <laughs> she's not going to be prosecuted. And here's what's going to happen. She is going to start the tearing tour, the tearing up tour. And what that means... Well, you said a few months ago she wants to be the underdog and she can try to play that. She's got to be the underdog. She's got to be the underdog or she can't win. She learned that the first race against Obama. She cannot win. No Clinton can win as an anointed one. They have to all... We had to make Bill every time be the underdog. Well, that's why everybody every hates time. Jeb Bush and her. We're sick of dynasties. So you do have a point. You're saying... That they're going with this, so then you're, Obama's not after her then? Obama's not trying to damage her because no. she is losing in the polls. Well, she's losing in the polls, but that's predictable. That's where I would put her. Hillary's doing just what I would tell her to do. But I believe Obama, through his new attorney general, is moving in and hovering. And I think there's a good chance, as like I said last time I was on, watch Biden. Joseph Biden is the move that nails Hillary for Obama. That's what neuters Hillary. Right now, members of Congress, which would have to be collectively called to declare a national crisis, they're afraid of Hillary. They're afraid that if you get on her enemies list like I am, you're in trouble deep. So they're worried about that.
But now if Biden gets in, now you've got somebody that might be able to nudge Hillary out of so the So if race. they've got the huevos to launch Biden, then you know her neck might be in a political guillotine. You'll know then that Obama's planning on staying. That's what exactly what you'll know. Because so I, Biden's a placeholder for Obama. That's exactly right. And don't don't doubt it for a second, because I promise you, you know it as well as I do. You could knock Hillary, kick her around, jump her up and down all you want to do. When she gets into the final vote in the Democratic primary, you know what's going to happen. She's going to win. I agree. She's Let's take win. a break for a moment uh, as and we I'll end this hour Pluto. some stations, and you can go. Give Pluto, let him out, let him go to the bathroom in the backyard. Oh, hi, <laughs> I love dogs. I've got I've got a French bulldog, and then I had another French bulldog, but it just became too much. So my parents wanted the French bulldog, so they've got the other French bulldog. But uh, they certainly are. They, they do like to get out about 11 or 12 at night, and so we've got that going on. This is teleprompter free live TV slash radio. But really just four hours of the show gets picked up on radio every day, so this is internet TV. But it's not internet TV anymore because we're up on the big official satellite at Infowars.com forward slash affiliate or affiliates. Both will both will take you there. The Alex Jones Show from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time and Sunday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. CST. Nightly news transmission starts at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and runs till 8 o'clock. But during debates or big events, we go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours live. And believe me, your viewers and listeners are sick of some stuffed suit up there giving you canned answers locally that he read out of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or CNN. You're not getting CNN's talking points here. You're getting my research, my guest research, that if you stack it up against their bull is a lot more accurate. Doesn't mean events don't change. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. But there's a reason we're successful. There's a reason we reach a billion four, a billion six a month on social media. Nobody else can get up here and talk about politics and get coverage like that. I could do staged events where guys run up and say, yeah, I'd such and such are writing the you know what, and we'd have 10 million views. I don't care to have total fluff-filled crap that's numero uno. I want to be numero uno talking about Obamacare doubling and tripling your prices written by foreign insurance companies to screw you and your family and bankrupt the country. I want to get 10 million views on a video about Obama arming ISIS and Al-Qaeda and to destabilize the Middle East. We're the ones, I'm not bragging, that five years ago and four years ago with Colonel Schaefer, and Wayne Madsen, we should get Wayne Madsen on tomorrow. He's, he's, he works for us. He's with us now. We need to. He's a correspondent, doing a great job. WayneMadsenReport.com, former NSA officer, and all these other guests that exposed what happened in Libya, what happened in Benghazi, the Stinger missiles, creating the Al Qaeda army to go after Syria, to go after Libya, to to go after all these countries to destabilize our ally Egypt. You heard that here first at nauseum when nobody cared, but noticed. We kept knocking and people started paying attention. And now in the last three weeks, the head of defense intelligence resigns and says, our government is funding Al-Qaeda under orders. This is evil. This is wrong. The deputy director of the CIA, who just left, they're leaving, says, yeah, there should be an investigation. 50 agents, 50, 50 analysts have gone public. Warning of Al-Qaeda and ISIS five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, were ordered to shut up, and we got fake intelligence. So we're just the surface of the resistance. It was the military that came to us, and it was the CIA pilots like Tosh Plumley who had the Justice Department visit him two days after he was here. He's a real whistleblower. You notice we don't whistleblow made up stuff about chubacabras in your backyard or Easter bunnies or Santa Claus or garden gnomes. We talk about real stuff. I told you 18 years ago, your toaster and was going to be watching you. Petraeus told you three years ago. We know what we're talking about. We're not bragging. We're not happy about it. We've studied history. We're serious people. 
We're against screwing people over. We're against tyranny. We got kids. We got families. We got family names. Our great granddaddies were good men. Our great grandmas were good women. We don't look for trouble. You want 